I think anybody, any thinking person, would understand that there's no such thing as a perfect text. No matter what you believe in, you would have to accept that that is the case. Even if you're the staunchest Christian or Muslim who believes that the Quran or the Bible were directly written by God himself using whatever person wrote it as their vessel, you would still have to accept that neither of those books could be perfect. And the reason for that is very, very simple. The reason is that either of those books are written in human languages. The language was invented by human beings and is therefore flawed and fallible. It contains ambiguities, it contains vagueness, it is just not reliable to get a perfect thought across even if the God who wrote the book were capable of perfect thought they would never be able to express that thought perfectly in human language and that of course is only assuming that they actually wrote the books themselves in most cases that is never the case the book the God speaks to a prophet who writes down the book which means that it has gone through three filters. It has gone through the filter where the God translated it into the language of the Prophet. The Prophet translated it into his own understanding after hearing it. And then the Prophet translated it again, trying to write it down so that other people would understand it. That's three translations, three um, filters that the text has gone through. If, of course, you're not reading the book in the original language, then that's another couple of filters. The filter of the translator, input and output, and your own filter. So nobody actually gets exposed, even if there were a god who were capable of perfect thought, nobody would actually ever be exposed to that thought directly. They would all, always go through the filter of at least one human language and the interpretation of at least the reader. So, that means that no, nobody can claim to have an absolute handle on the truth, no matter what they believe in. But it's a double-edged thought. It also means that we, as atheists, as criticizers of belief systems, cannot possibly use a book to attack somebody's personal belief system. You cannot take the Quran or the Bible, lift a number of passages from it and say and accuse somebody and say this is what you believe in and it is horrible. All you can do is say this is what I'm reading in your holy book and I find that horrible, which is something I have done on a number of occasions in the past. But when it comes to a believer's personal belief system, all you can then do is present them with a text and say that this is what you believe and what you feel is horrible and ask them what they make of the text and then see what they actually believe and then you might have something to attack them on in their belief system. Attack obviously is meant in a sense of argument, attacking them by logic, by reason, by argumentation and in no other way. So we have to be careful when we do things like bash Islam for example because what are we bashing? Are we bashing the literal text of the Quran which of course each Muslim interprets in their own way? What are we attacking there? Are we attacking those who undeniably exist within the Islamic community who feel that they that their interpretation of the Quran is correct and who feel that it means that they can engage in the most barbaric acts of violence and terrorism? Or do we accept that there are some Muslims out there who take that very same holy text and somehow manage to interpret that in a peaceful way and do not support that sort of violence? In the end, a believer's belief system, a believer's faith, is what is in that person's head and not is what is in the book that they hold in their hands. 
So if a Muslim says that they are peaceful, then we should at least give them the benefit of the doubt. If, of course, by subsequent comments they make, for example, they illustrate that they're lying, then they're fair game. And I will not hesitate to attack a person on that basis. Again, attack in a argumenting sense. But if somebody tells you that they abhor violence, then we need to need to take that at the very first, at the very least, at face value and give them the benefit of the doubt on that. I think that is a reasonable thing to do when you're dealing with a believer. And besides, talking about Islam, I have I have understood from talking to a number of Muslims that their belief system can occasionally be very sophisticated. I've asked people what my atheism means. I've asked Muslims what it means that I am an atheist. And as opposed to a lot of Christians who happily and gleefully condemn me to hell, a lot of Muslims might start out by arguing in, in that general direction. But when put under pressure, they often realize that it is as valid for me to be an atheist, from their perspective, right, is as valid for me to be an atheist as it is for them to be a Muslim. And that realization is something that goes very deep. It goes to the foundations of their understanding of what they believe in. In other words, if I die an unrepentant atheist, a Muslim will accept from their perspective believing in Allah as they do in their God who will sit in judgment over everybody. They accept that that judgment is entirely at the discretion of their God and is not dictated by what it says in the Quran. So, it is at the very least conceivable to a Muslim that Allah in, the, in His mercy will judge me as an atheist, as an unrepentant atheist to be righteous enough to deserve a place in their paradise. How that might possibly work is not my problem. What to me is important as an atheist is that many Muslims are able to have that level of acceptance of my non-belief. And that is regardless of what it might say in the Quran in all these passages about hellfire and damnation for non-believers. That is what a lot of people, a lot of Muslims, after having thought about this, tell me is their personal understanding of what they believe in. And that's good enough for me. That makes them, in my opinion, tolerant human beings. People who can accept that there are other people out there who do not share their beliefs. So, by all means, bash, bash those Muslims who are rabid, violent apologists for terrorism and all the other hatefulness that undeniably is founded by some followers of Islam. But don't be so silly as to claim that Islam is like that, because it isn't. Not in my experience, and that is experience as an outsider, because I am no Muslim and I never will be. But I have learned to respect a lot of Muslims, even whilst I vehemently disrespect a lot of other Muslims. And I think if people cannot see that believers are individuals as much as we atheists are, then you're doomed to attack the wrong people for the wrong reasons. Thank you.